Welcome to the lecture number 16 of the course quantum mechanics and molecular spectroscopy. We will just look at the final equation that we derived in the previous lecture and proceed with that. Toward the end of the last lecture, we showed that the probability of transition to a final state f is given by 4 pi square E naught square by H bar square. E naught bar H square omega F phi pi omega square del omega F phi plus omega plus del omega F phi minus omega square F epsilon dot mu dot i whole square ok. Uh, I made a small mistake in the last lecture is that this 4 does not exist because you know when you write cos omega t you have 1 over 2. So, that when comes out of this this square bra square or absolute square to cancel the score. So, there is a small mistake, but that is not going to change the way we look at the entire problem. So, P of t is just given by pi square E naught square by h bar square into omega f phi by omega square del omega f phi plus omega del omega f phi so omega square modulus of half epsilon dot mu i whole square. Okay. Now, there is one more thing. Uh, is when you are squaring this. So, omega f i square of course is equal to omega i f square. Okay. So, the transition whether it is going from the state f to state i or state i to state f this is will remain the same. Okay. Now, the other thing that we said that when you have del omega f i plus omega this will correspond to stimulated emission and del omega f i minus omega this will correspond to absorption. Okay. And we said this cannot happen simultaneously either stimulated emission will happen or absorption will happen. Okay. So, only one of the process can happen at a given point of time and both cannot happen simultaneously. So, if we consider for absorption, process from initial state i to a final state f, then P f of t is given by pi square E naught square by H bar square omega f i by omega square omega f i minus omega square f epsilon dot mu i whole square. Oh, that is the transient probability for absorption process going from an initial state i to a final state f. Okay. Now, one can also write very simply a uh, slight rearrangement. So, P f of t. Now, we know h bar is nothing but h by 2 pi. Okay. So, when we had pi square by h bar square. So, h bar square is equal to h square by 4 pi square or 1 over h square is equal to 
4 pi square by h bar square. Okay. So, one can think of this as if I take this 4, so 1 over 4 h bar square is equal to pi square by h bar square. So, I can always write this. So, your p f of t can also be written as e naught square omega f phi by omega square del omega f i minus omega square f epsilon dot mu i whole square. So, p of this can also be written as e naught square by 4 h square omega f i by omega whole square del omega f i minus omega whole square f epsilon dot mu i whole square. Now, you can see you can write in two different ways. Essentially, the functional form still remains the same. So, it will have the square of the transient moment integral. then you will have this delta function and some constants. Okay. Now, the problem here is this that how this equation okay, will behave. Okay. That is what we want to look at. Let us look at the delta function, delta of some function x this can be written as limits n tends to infinity 1 over 2 pi sin n x by 2 divided by x by 2. This is a way one can write a delta function as well. Okay. Now, one can also write delta omega f i minus omega as delta omega. If one writes that, then your of delta omega can be written as okay, limit n tends to infinity 1 over 2 pi sin of delta omega to n by 2 divided by delta omega by 2. Okay. Now, but what is your n here? n is just the time. Okay. So, I can still rewrite as delta omega is equal to limit t tends to infinity equal to 1 over 2 pi sin of delta omega t by 2 by delta omega 2. Now, why I am using limit t tends to infinity? Because you can I we have all, but this is a valid limit because remember when we drew this perturbation curve from 0 to t prime and goes to infinity. So, time can go up to infinity without any consequence because after t prime it does not the perturbation does not exist. So, one can think of this limit to be taken over. So, this same as extending our integral. So, which means I can rewrite p of t of f this is equal to pi square e naught square by h bar square okay, omega f i by omega square. I had del of omega f i minus omega square integral f epsilon dot mu i 
whole square. Now, this I will write in terms of the limit. Okay. So, this will come out to be there was a 2 pi 1 or 2 pi. So, that I can bring it outside. So, pi square e naught square by h bar square omega f i by omega whole square into 1 over 4 pi square because and this pi square and this pi square will get cancelled and this one will be sin of delta omega t by 2 divided by delta omega by 2 whole square f epsilon e by whole square where delta omega is nothing but omega f i minus omega. Okay. Now, when, so I am going to slightly rewrite this equation. So, p f of t is equal to e naught square by 4 h bar square omega f i by omega square modulus of sin del omega t by 2 by del omega by 2 square f whole square. So, this is the probability. So, now you can see the probability of a transition or an absorption from initial state to final state will depend on this will depend on this transition moment integral and will get modulated by this function. So, this I this is nothing but TMI transition moment integral and this is nothing but your modulating function. I will come back to what modulation function really means, but just you know for a, a minute let us keep it uh, let us look at it. So, I am going to okay, tell. Now, what does it really mean? It means that your probability of function f of t equals to. Okay. Now, uh, as I told you this will depend on e naught square by 4 h bar square omega f i by omega square sin square del omega t by 2 divided by del omega by 2 because the square. So, I have just bought it out of square and multiplied by modulus of f epsilon dot mu i square. Now, this I told you the transition moment it is a definite integral I will just write it as t and I take a square of it. So, it will be t square. So, your p f of t is equal to e naught square by 4 h bar square omega f i by omega square sin del omega t by 2 square of that and del omega by 2 square of that to t square. Now, you can see for a given omega, okay, omega f i is fixed because the energy difference between the two states is fixed. So, your initial state and the final states are fixed. So, omega f i is a constant. Omega will vary because if your electromagnetic radiation varies, that will vary okay, because you can tune the radiation. You can go from some frequency to some other frequency or some wavelength to some other wavelength. For example, if you are recording an absorption spectrum in the visible light with the visible light, then your wavelength will change from 400 nanometer to 800 nanometer and correspondingly the frequencies will also change. Okay. So, omega will is a varying function. Okay. So, this will get affected because omega f i is fixed, but omega could vary. So, this ratio will vary. Apart from that, this del this sine function will vary because you know as delta omega varies, sine also will varies. Okay. 
but you see sin function can only go from 0 to 1. Okay. So, the sin square function also goes from only from 0 to 1. Okay. In fact, sin function goes from minus 1 to plus 1, but sin square function can only go from 0 to 1. So, this function is basically modulating between 0 and 1. And now, if I plot okay, delta omega, this is 0, okay. that means omega f i is equal to omega, this is equal to delta omega is equal to 0 and then you can think of some units 1, 2, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 and then 1, 2, 3, etc. Okay. And if I plot this function here that is nothing but sin square del omega t by 2 whole square divided by del omega by 2 uh, okay uh, rather there is no t i'll just plot the without the t okay then this function will look something like this Okay. Oh, this is kind of exaggerated view actually this will be even lower. Okay. So, this will hit the roof, this will go much more and this will. So, which means your absorption okay, will also happen away from the resonance, but so this is the resonance okay. delta, delta omega is equal to 0 is also called resonance condition. Okay. It can also happen away from the resonance. Okay. However, you will see that this will be very, very low. So, essentially away from the resonance, we will still not be able to see transitions. Okay. The major transition will happen or the maximum probability of transition will only happen at the resonance that is nothing but the omega f i is equal to omega and this is also called Bohr condition. Okay. So, essentially your P f of t equals to E naught square by 4 h bar square omega f i by omega whole square sin square del omega t by 2 divided by del omega by 2 whole square f This gives you probability of transition or absorption from initial state i to a final state f. something like that. Okay. Now, one interesting fact is that this has got width. Like that. Okay. It has got a width and this width has some important consequence. You know, we will go to the line widths and then we will discuss this. And the line width comes from this function.
okay. And this function will tell us selection rules. Okay. So, for a and this will tell you effectively tell you intensity. So, essentially there are three factors that determine the probability of a transition from a ground state or initial state I to a final state. One is the transition moment integral that will tell you whether this action will be allowed or not, if allowed what its value. Second thing is your modulating function which will tell you how the line widths will come about and third one will be intensity that will depend on the how much light you are shining. Okay. So, we will stop at this point of time and continue in the next lecture. Thank you. Thank you.